So for today's author highlights video, we are mixing it up today with a new filming location. I am deciding to film across from my bookshelf in front of my desk, because why not? Really, we're here more for the author highlights, which today is Tamara Pierce. So brace yourselves to hear more about one of my favorite authors. Hi everyone, it is Samantha and today I'm very excited about today's author highlights video because I'm going to be talking to you guys about one of my favorite authors from my childhood and that is Tamara Pierce. She is a fantastic author and I can't wait to talk to you guys about her. She is just, has a very big place in my teenage years and very special place in my heart, Miss Tamara Pierce. So basically today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about her and a little bit about her background because some of it I find to be interesting. Her books, Where to Start where I feel you should start, and a little bit more about the books, what they're about. So let us get started. So I was first introduced to Tamara Pearson. I was a freshman in high school. I had actually, it was actually my first trimester, and we had PE that trimester, and I ended up starting this chat with this girl, Whitney, and we both discovered that we liked to read, and she eventually was like, hey, have you ever read Tamara Pierce? And I was like, no, because you both discovered we like fantasy. So she owned all the books and she lent them to me. Basically, Whitney was like a library and she would lend all of her books to all of us. So she lent me the first book, Alana, by Tamara Pierce, which is the first book in the Alana Quartet, the Song of Lioness Quartet. And it was fabulous. It was everything I had ever wanted. I've always been a big fantasy reader since I was in middle school, probably about 11, so I guess about fifth grade. And one thing that I wanted was a strong female character because I was a girl and I wanted to see a girl protagonist. And Tamara Pierce delivered on that. Basically, Alana and all of her characters was everybody that I wanted to be. And it was fabulous. It's funny because that was exactly why Tamara Pierce wrote these books. She was a big lover of fantasy as a child. And she was introduced to Tolkien's world in middle school and she was a big fan of the original Star Trek. And stuff like this but the one thing that she said she noticed was a lack of female protagonists and she wanted to see other strong female characters so she actually ended up writing what we would now call fan fiction she would write stories that took place in middle earth in the star trek universe in ray bradbury's universes or worlds including our own and she would write her own stories except for she would make them take place there but about strong female characters and she even said she's like I was writing fan fiction before fan fiction was even a thing and she eventually ended up developing the land of Tortal which is where Alana takes place and Alana is actually based upon her sister so she ended up taking all of these characters and these things that she wanted in fantasy and making them come true through her own books creating strong female characters I love these books to bits and now I can't wait to talk to you guys about them as well all of her books are fantasy and you would consider them I guess to be YA though one of her series which does not take place in the same Tortal universe is more middle grade. So almost her books are written in quartets. The first of those quartets that she wrote was the Alana Quartet which consists of Alana in the hands of the goddess, Lioness Rampant, and the woman who rides like a man. The second quartet is the Immortals Quartet with the first book is Wild Magic. Book two is Wolf Speaker. Book three is Emperor Mage. And book three is in the realm of the gods. And the fourth third quartet is the Protector of the Small Quartet and this consists of First Test, Page, Squire, and Lady Knight. All of these books Books take place shortly after the other so Alana kind of starts off the adventure and then Wild Magic takes up maybe a few years after the end of the first Alana Quartet and then Squire's Tales takes place shortly after the Immortals Quartet and then in addition to this she also wrote the Trickster's Duology which consists of a Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen and these books take place many years after the Protector of the Small Quartet and it features Alana's daughter so very exciting this is actually one of my favorite of her series in this role she ended up writing a prequel trilogy and this is the Becca Cooper trilogy and probably my favorite book series by her. It, first book is Terrier, the second book is Bloodhound, and the third book is Mastiff. These books take place about I believe four or five hundred years before the start of Alana and it features one of the character's ancestors. To these books she also has a short story collection featuring these characters and other things that take place in the Tortau universe and also in addition to the Tortau universe she has another universe. These books, the first quartet of which is more middle grade and then they kind of go into a more of a YA feel as the books go along. These books are the Circle of Magic Quartet and they consist of the Sandry's book, Triss's book, Daja's book, and Briar's book. And then it goes into the Circle Opens Quartet which includes Magic Steps, Street Magic, 
Cold Fire, and Shattered Glass. And then there is a standalone novel that features all of these characters, and that is The Will of the Empress. In addition to this, she has a couple of books that take place in the Circle Universe that feature some of these characters, and that includes Melting Stones and Battle Magic. And in addition to all of these, she has many short story collections and short stories. So now we're going to go into where I believe is the best place to start if you're looking to get into Tamara Pierce, and I believe that you actually have two starting places. The first of those I am going to say is going to be the Becca Cooper trilogy, as this takes place four or five hundred years before the start of the Ilana series, I think this would actually be a good place to kind of introduce you into the Tortau world and kind of give you a basis for some of the things that were referenced in the Ilana series. I absolutely love this one. I think that this will actually introduce you to the world in a way that will make you fall in love with it. She has very, very likable and enjoyable characters. The Becca Cooper trilogy follows... The Becca Cooper series follows Becca, who is a rookie in the Lower Provost Guard, which is basically the police force in the country of Tortau. And Becca is unique in that she can talk to pigeons. This sounds this sounds kind of lame until you know that pigeons carry the souls of the dead. She's had this ability since she was a child. She can basically converse with the dead and figure out how people have died. So she uses that ability in her work in order to solve a series of crimes. So it's kind of a mystery with a lot of fantasy elements mixed in. I absolutely love Becca. She's a very strong character. And since she's a rookie, she ends up getting paired with two of the more seasoned officers, which is Mats and Clary, and you will fall in love with them just as much as well. I absolutely love this series. It was so much fun. Book three has a twist I never saw coming in a million years, and I still feel a little bit devastated by, but I really, really recommend it, and I think this would be an excellent place if you're looking to start in Tamara Pierce's world. The second place I think you should start is, of course, the Alana Quartet. This is in publication order. This is the first one that she wrote, and it is so good. It does feel a little bit middle gradey, the first First few books but it definitely grows up as the character continues to grow up. Basically the story follows Alana. Alana and her sister Tom are twin brother and sister and the son and daughter have kind of a negligent father. He doesn't pay that much attention. They've basically been raised by the servants. And they are to be sent away. Alana is to be sent to the monastery where she is to learn magic. And then her brother Tom is to be sent to the capital where he will be learning to become a knight in the realm. But unfortunately, Alana wants to go to learn to become a knight and her brother wants to go to learn magic. So being twins, she whacks off her hair, poses as a boy, and they trade places. So she ends up hiding her identity while she trains to become a knight because she knows she is just as good as all the boys boys and she will become a knight. She also gets caught up into a mystery that is threatening the realm and she ends up befriending the prince himself and together they all kind of set out to figure out what is trying to bring harm to this land that they live in and as well as learn to become knights. So the story first starts out with them becoming pages, progresses into them becoming squires, and then eventually knights and going on from there. The story is fantastic. Alana is a very strong female character. I absolutely love her. She was she was everything I wanted to be when I was 14 years old. She had a sword, she could ride a horse, she wanted to be a knight, and I, because I've always been fascinated with medieval history and culture. Basically everything I wanted to be, she was fantastic. So definitely a very big role model. So I absolutely love Alana, this is such a great series, and the other starting place I would recommend if you're looking to start in the Tortal universe. After this comes the second quartet after Alana, and that is the Immortals Quartet. This features Dane, I think is how you say her name. I always used to say Diane, and then I realized it wasn't spelled that way, it was spelled like this, so I think you pronounce it as a Dane. But I love Dane, because I've always been a big animal lover and Dane has the abilities to speak with animals. She has wild magic and she ends up going to the capital of Tortal, ends up becoming trained in it, and ends up having to help save the kingdom from evil forces that are trying to influence it. The gods themselves are becoming involved and the immortals are starting to leak into their universe because the universes were kind of closed off from each other. So there's a lot of immortal creatures that are coming into play and the gods are being influenced and are playing a lot more into this series than they did in the first one. I forgot to mention that. in the Ilana Quartet the gods also play a role in that series as well but even more so in this one. I absolutely love this one because I love animals and I wanted her ability to speak to animals because Come on, who doesn't want to speak to their animals? Anyway, I really, really enjoyed this one. This is another really, really good one, and you will enjoy this one just as much as Alana. The Protector of the Small Quartet follows our protagonist, Kelladry, who wants to follow in Alana's footsteps and become a Lady Knight herself. She's the first girl to attempt this since Alana herself did it. And it basically follows all of her trials and tribulations. She also becomes caught up in the political and godly events that are going on in the Empire, another very strong female character, and I really enjoyed this one. I think I enjoyed Alana a little bit more, but this one is just as good. This follows into the Trickster's Duology. The Trickster's Duology, as I said, follows Alana's daughter. So Trickster's Choice follows her daughter, Ali Ann, and though she wants to be a spy, she's forbidden by her parents. She ends up leaving, ends up being captured and sold as a slave in the Copper Isles. She ends up being taken 
under the guidance of the god trickster god Kripioth, and she ends up having to set out to free the native Raka people from their Luaran conquerors. I absolutely love this one. This is one of my favorite books by Tamara Pierce, this duology. Absolutely lovable. I love Ali Ann. She's a very fascinating character. Again, very strong-willed as all of her characters are, and it was just really, really enjoyable. This, of course, next brings us into Tamara Pierce's other world, and this is the Circle Universe, and these were the books that follow Sandry, Triss, Daja, and Briar. I absolutely love this series. It is a lot of fun. It follows these four children who at this time of starting were 10 years old. They are brought to this monastery to learn magic by Nico, and he is told that they are all have ambient magic, which is magic that comes from the earth itself. So they are taught separate leaves. They don't quite get, fit in and get along with the other kids. And they're taught to work together and they go through a lot of trials and tribulations themselves. And they end up kind of coming of age together, if you will. But they end up having to become involved in some of the events that will not only threaten them, but the world that they live in. I really, really enjoy this series. It's a lot of fun. It definitely starts out more middle grade and then goes into more YA as the series progresses. The series after this, of course, is the Circle Opens Quartet and it still features all of these characters. They are now in their mid to late teens and they basically have all had to set out on their own. They have to kind of make a name of their own, follow their respective magics and go to places where they can harness it and use it for good. I really really enjoyed this series as well. It was great to see them out kind of outside of their dynamic kind of having to make their way in the world by themselves and it was just really really enjoyable. I actually enjoyed this one a little bit more than the first quartet and it was just a lot of fun because these characters are very very enjoyable. And then of course this brings us to Will the Empress which is a standalone novel. It's where all of these characters have to come together to defend one another and they get kind of caught up into a plot that involves Sandry's cousin the Empress and kind of all hell breaks loose from there. I don't remember the specifics of this one as much because I read it once. I need to reread this whole series again and then get to this one. And I read this one back in 2005 when it first came out, so it's been 10 years. So my memory's a little bit hazy on this, but I do remember enjoying it and seeing all these characters back together. And then of course the other two books, Melting Stones and Battle Magic, feature these characters again after the events in this one. I still have not read them, but I need to. But I want to reread these books first, so it will happen soon. All right, guys, that is it for my author highlights video for Tamara Pierce. I hope this will kind of inspire you to read some more Tamara Pierce. Her books are really fun. They're really easy to get through, and they're just really, really enjoyable, and they have a lot of feminist qualities. They're really enjoyable, and I love these books so much. They always have a special place in my heart because they meant a lot to me in my teenage years. So thank you guys so much for watching. You'll have to let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, and I will try and answer them. Or if you have read them, you'll have to let me know what your favorite book is or which series is your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy reading. Bye! Bye.